In 2004, FBI Director Robert Mueller held a press conference where he revealed the seven most wanted al-Qaeda terrorists in the world. One of them was unusual. Afia Siddiqui is an al-Qaeda operative and facilitator. She attended colleges in the Boston area and is believed to have left Boston in January of 2003. In 2008, Siddiqui was arrested in Afghanistan and charged with attempted murder for firing an assault rifle at FBI agents. She was caught with plans for a chemical attack on New York City and a large quantity of cyanide. She is now serving an 86-year prison sentence. The case of Afia Sadiq is significant, and I think it's a great example of how a seemingly um, attractive, smart, uh, well-natured, good-natured person, American citizen, uh, could become a uh, jihadi. How is it that she came to be a MIT grad and uh, then gets arrested overseas uh, as an Al-Qaeda operative? How, wh what the heck happened there? While studying at Boston's MIT and Brandeis universities, Siddiqui became one of the most active members of a cell of Al-Qaeda activists who were followers of the Blind Sheikh, the mastermind of the first World Trade Center bombing. As Siddiqui became more and more radical, she began frequenting the mosque of Imam Abdullah Farouk, and he began helping her distribute jihadist literature to local prisons, where he had also served as a Muslim chaplain. Farouk gives inflammatory sermons to Muslim congregations around Boston. Why should you not struggle, fight, if you have to, in the way of Allah, when those who are weak amongst you from amongst the, and ill-treated, and oppressed, it adds here, this is an oppressed, men and women and children whose cry is our Lord, rescue us from this town whose people are oppressors. You know, and if, if anybody in the world is to be brave, it must be us. You must grab onto this rope, grab onto the typewriter, grab onto the shovel, grab onto the gun and the sword. Don't be afraid to step out into this world and do your job. And in closing, I say, and the disbelievers, they're watching us too. Know that and behave as though you're being watched. Imam Farouk is the Muslim chaplain of Northeastern University, the largest university in Boston and the fourth largest private university in the country. Northeastern chaplain Farouk's extremist past raises serious concerns about the possibility that he is promoting extremism at the Islamic Society of Northeastern University or ISNU, the Muslim student group on campus. Farouk is that group's official spiritual advisor. Before Afia Siddiqui was even sentenced, Chaplain Farouk was already using her trial to incite other Boston Muslims at local mosques against the U.S. government. I brought some papers tonight that I'm going to ask if I could give out. Regarding a woman who is presently suffering, this woman, Afia Siddiq, some people are afraid to get involved with politics and things that are going on, but you know, after they're finished with Afia, they're going to come to your door, if they feel like it. You know this Patriot Act permits them to come anywhere they want at any time. They say that she took up a machine gun while they held her captive in the other room and was ready to attack her captives. What a brave woman she is. It is said that we're trying to raise $30,000 tonight. I would say it's better that we raise your awareness and raise your air, as I say, so your anger against the government who would level the charges that they have against this woman and they say she is guilty. Uh, I would say she's only guilty of defending herself. Afia Siddiqui isn't the only convicted terrorist Northeastern Chaplain Farouk is supporting. In 2009, the FBI arrested Tarek Mehana, a Sudbury man who often taught evening classes on Islam at Northeastern. They say the man spent seven years working on terror plots, seven years with targets that include American soldiers and unnamed politicians in the executive branch. Prosecutors tell us he also, and his friends also discussed, spraying gunfire at random shoppers inside a mall. 
Mehana plotted to attack the Emerald Square Mall in North Attleboro, 40 miles from the northeastern campus in an automatic assault rifle rampage similar to the 2009 Mumbai attacks in India. Indicted together with Mehana was Ahmad Abu Samra, a Northeastern University graduate who is now a fugitive in Syria and whose father has close connections to Farouk. According to the indictment, the two would take extreme pleasure in watching videos of Al-Qaeda terrorists mutilating the bodies of American soldiers in Iraq. They considered themselves to be the media wing of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Mehana was convicted on all terror charges against him and was sentenced to 17 years in jail. Northeastern Chaplain Farouk participates with Northeastern students in demonstrations in support of Mihana. In February 2011, when Mihana was denied bail, Farouk was seen outside the courthouse telling a Northeastern student not to give up hope. They didn't stop. On April 3, 2011, Muslim students at Northeastern organized a seminar in defense of Tariq Mahana, who they claim is suffering from FBI repression. The seminar was supported by the Northeastern administration through the student activity fee. In 2011, the Islamic Society of Northeastern and other student groups were again given funds from the student activity fee to invite Norman Finkelstein. Finkelstein accuses Jews of exploiting the Holocaust to slaughter Palestinians. The invitation prompted Northeastern's Jewish students to write an open letter to President Aoun. The Jewish community at Northeastern is beginning to feel unsafe and uncomfortable on campus. We are appalled that the university would sanction such hateful rhetoric against a significant portion of the student body. Speakers like Norman Finkelstein, for example, are frequently the guests of the Muslim Student Associations on campuses all over America. They love him. He's been called the dream Jew of anti-Semites. We are here protesting the fact that the university is paying for an anti-Semite to speak. That it's being paid for the student activity fee, wow. which comes directly from our tuition. If you judge by income, American Jews are now, by a significant margin, the wealthiest ethno-religious group in the US. Farouk was visibly excited as he listened to Finkelstein's anti-Semitic speech. He was joined in this excitement by some of his colleagues at the Spiritual Life Center, a Northeastern department that claims it strives to serve, support, nurture, and celebrate the spiritual and religious well-being of all the NU community. The religious leaders offended Jewish students for supporting the notorious anti-Israel speaker. Spiritual Life Office was sitting in the front row wearing kaffiyas, endorsing and applauding everything that Norman Finkelstein had to say. The issue here is that the Spiritual Life Department is here as a group in favor of Norman Finkelstein. Not favoring him, enjoying his comments when they, when they resonated to be the truth. This was not the first time members of the Spiritual Life Center engaged in activities deeply offensive to Jews. Both Assistant Director Brandy Purcell and Director Shelley Jankowski-Smith were involved in activities that offended Jewish students. It's a shame that the Assistant Director of the uh, Spiritual Life Department here is a, a real um, biased hater of Israel. She's spoken at um, Students for Justice in Palestine events and, um, you know, hates me for my title. My title is Israel Programs Director here at, uh, here at Hillel. I mean, she works for a part of the department that is supposed to be open to all students and interfaith and all these sorts of things, when in reality, she's a, she's a hate-filled, um, almost anti-Semitic person. The center's director, Shelley Jankowski-Smith, is a former employee of the Islamic Society of North America, an organization identified by federal authorities as a financial sponsor of Hamas. For many years, Jankowski-Smith served as an advisor to the Islamic Society of Northeastern. As a result of these incidents, and the subsequent complaints by Northeastern's Jewish community, the university made several organizational changes at the Spiritual Life Center, including removing Shelley Jankowski-Smith. Imam Farouk is closely associated with the local Islamic Society of Boston chapter, the Islamic Society of Boston's radical mega-mosque in Roxbury, the mosque has given thousands of dollars to Northeastern's Muslim group. A founding trustee of the Roxbury Mosque is Yusuf Karadawi.
the ISNU website under Chaplain Farouk's leadership, had long recommended books by Karadawi, who is the spiritual leader of the extremist Muslim Brotherhood that has now taken over Egypt. Karadawi frequently calls for genocide of Jews. Other hateful books on the Islamic Society of Northeastern's website were written by Saeed Khatoub, the father of the Jihad Against the West ideology. Khatoub's books were what inspired Osama bin Laden. One of these books is Milestones. The Islamic Society recommends it to Northeastern's Muslim students. Said Qutb's Milestones was the spark that ignited the Islamic Revolution back then in the 60s and continues to propel it today. And it's the one text that I believe every cop, every FBI agent, every employee at DHS, every government official at the state, local and national level must read. Boston's Muslim students at Northeastern were advised to read Milestones which calls for Muslims to hate the West and refuse to accept Western civilization. All Jewish and Christian societies today are also ignorant societies. Islam cannot accept any mixing with this ignorance. One should accept the Islamic law without any questions and reject all other laws in any shape or form. The abolition of man-made laws cannot be achieved only through preaching. It must employ jihad to establish God's authority in the earth to arrange human affairs according to the true guidance provided by God, to abolish all the satanic forces and satanic systems of life. Another author whose teachings were promoted to Northeastern's Muslim students is Ma'alana Ma'adudi, the father of Islamic Jihad on the Indian subcontinent. The greatest sacrifice made in the way of God is Jihad, in it, man sacrifices not only his own life and belongings, but destroys those of others also, even if it were thousands or more. The Islamic Society of Northeastern didn't just promote the writings of Pakistani jihadis, it actually brought at least one of them to campus. In 2005, the year ISNU was awarded the Husky Award for Excellence in a Student Group, it brought to Northeastern Imam Hafiz Ma'asud, a Pakistani cleric at the Islamic Center of New England in Sharon, Massachusetts. Masood was arrested and deported back to Pakistan in 2008. He had been in the country illegally and had also harbored a dark secret. Masood's brother is the founder of an organization called lashkar e taiba which, by the way, is a terrorist organization. Uh, lashkar e taiba was responsible, for instance, for the Mumbai attacks. Masood's brother, Hafiz Saeed, is believed to have masterminded the 2009 terrorist massacre in Mumbai, India, killing 166 civilians and targeted Jews specifically. He is now one of the most wanted terrorists in the world with a $10 million American bounty on his head. According to the Times of India, Masood allegedly raised money and recruited for his brother's terror activities while in Boston. Could extremist influence on Muslim students at Northeastern be inciting them to terrorism? Recently, another Northeastern graduate, Rezwan Ferdowis, pleaded guilty to plotting an attack on the Pentagon and Capitol buildings in Washington. The FBI has arrested a man accused of plotting to attack the United States Capitol building and the Pentagon with large remote-controlled airplanes packed with explosives. The feds report they arrested a 26-year-old United States citizen and Northeastern University physics grad, describing him as a fan of Al-Qaeda, committed to violent jihad since early last year. Rezwan wasn't particularly religious until halfway through his studies at Northeastern. He was a member of a rock band called Goose Pimp Orchestra. But by 2007, Rezwan had quit the band and set off on a path of Islamic extremism that led him to terrorism. Responding to concerns about Farouk raised in 2011, Madeline Estabrook, Interim Vice President for Student Affairs, wrote, We are aware of concerns about our Muslim chaplain, Imam Abdullah Farouk, based on various website accounts. However, our interactions with the Imam have been reasonable and appropriate. Interestingly, 
in March of 2012, Northeastern University's president, Joseph Aoun, was appointed to a new academic advisory council that will report to the Department of Homeland Security on how universities can contribute to anti-terrorism efforts in the United States. He told the Boston Globe that, we need more research and training related to security. This is ironic considering Northeastern's apparent complacent attitude towards the presence of extremists like Farouk on President Aoun's own campus. On August 24, 2012, the Jewish Advocate published an op-ed by Americans for Peace and Tolerance President Charles Jacobs and its director of research, Ilya Fyaktisov, which described the findings noted in this video and its imminent public release. By Friday, August 31st, Imam Farouk was removed from Northeastern's website. We believe his relationship with Northeastern University has been terminated. Northeastern University President Joseph Aoun should be commended for dismissing Chaplain Farouk and initiating actions to deal with extremism on the Northeastern campus. President Aoun needs to take additional steps to deal with Islamist extremism on campus and to reduce the threat of further radicalization of Northeastern's Muslim students. These should include investigating the Islamic Society of Northeastern's funding sources, identifying potential sources of radicalism, including tenured faculty who promote hate on campus.